Science is amazing because it's, it's the search for truth. We know so little, even though we've, we've learned so much, we barely know anything, right? There's still so much more to know and to learn. A lot of students will go down into Highbridge Park and they've lived in the community their whole lives. And they say, I didn't even know this was here. I didn't know this existed. And that just excites me. You know, that's a part of what I think um, learning outside of the classroom is about. You guys have your shovels? I teach at the Washington Heights Expeditionary Learning School. That's a school that focuses on designing classroom work around case studies and expeditions. It's basically learning by doing. Our history students should act as historians. Our science students should behave as scientists and go and do the research and do the science experiments and learn from it. There's very little Dr. Fox lecturing to everyone, but they're on the laptops doing research, making PSAs, or they're out doing science research, doing water testing, but everyone is always actively doing science. As much as possible, bringing the real world into the classroom. So in my own classroom, uh, we look at water for a good part of the year, everywhere from New York City's drinking water down to the water quality in our harbor. You guys are at this point are experts. I'd say you probably know more than 99% of the people in New York City about their water supply. We try to design our classroom around case studies, uh, field work, Getting kids out on the water, we go to the Bronx River, for example, and just like immersing yourselves literally in the water, in the, in the work, is just another way to get students to think about what's around them. It allows me as a teacher to bring my own passions into the classroom. I started learning all about the New York City water supply system. I have partnered with the DEP, who's been a great resource to bring experts into the classroom. I've written grants to bring students up to the Catskill Mountains to see where their drinking water comes from. All these things as I've been learning about them, I've become really excited about. He's just always, always trying new things in his classroom. Whenever a lesson doesn't go great, he's the guy who then says, what was it? Was it something I did? Was it something about the lesson? He'll ask for feedback. And another thing that I really believe in as a classroom teacher is making sure that the work that we do in the classroom is embedded locally and contextualize in what's going on in our neighborhood and our community as much as possible. Myself and a co-teacher have designed some curriculum around working in Highbridge Park, which is just right across the street. And we have another partner organization, New York Restoration Project. We're able to bring students into the park where they're able to restore trails, remove invasive species, plant native species. And we have have this vision now of creating a clean air, green corridor which will actually connect not only our school, but the five other schools on 182nd Street along this clean air green corridor. I think after their time with Dr. Fox, students feel very empowered through science. They end up feeling like they can be advocates for their community through the knowledge of science that they have. I think especially in the world that we live in today where the truth is being challenged for an alternate reality, as a science teacher, I think we're uniquely positioned and, and indeed required to make sure that students understand how to pursue the truth and have those tools and skills. If you have high expectations and you provide the necessary supports along the way, what students can do is will blow you away. It's incredible, like the work products that some students can put together, just the creativity and the imagination but also being able to display the content that they've learned in the classroom to show what they know has been impressive to watch and then be a part of.